for those of you guys who haven't seen the show tonight, uh, show before, this is sort of it's like a talk show. It's very much like the. Are you guys laughing at something in particular, or just generally? Okay, great. Uh, it's gonna be. A, it's a talk show in the style of the Tonight Show, uh, except focused on Portland and the things that we're really interested in that we think are really cool. Normally, uh, Bree Pruitt comes out and does this part of the show and gets you all warmed up. And as you can tell, I am not Bree Pruitt. Don't. Yeah, I know. Uh, I miss her too. Well, so here's here's the Bree situation. Uh, actually, you know what? <laughs> Here's the Bree situation. Bert, thank you. Uh, you know, why don't, why don't I just do this? Why don't I just show you? Why don't we just show you? I'll show you a video. Here's this is what happened. Uh, this is the Bree situation. Uh, go ahead, Caitlin, roll the video. We have such a fun show today. It's good to see you again. I see you too. I like to pretend that we only see each other once a month on show days. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that like a bride and groom, like I don't see you until I come out on stage. <laughs> like, oh, a jean jacket. <laughs> I ran this by you at dress rehearsal, how dare you? You knew about this jean jacket. See, you have a great commercial voice. You just, bad timing, bad timing. Bad timing. I don't know, Mom, it was a good show, but I'm just not about this psychic game anymore. It's not how you raise me, you know? To, to wait to speak, to wait to to drop some bang and joke that changes everybody's lives. I mean, I just am really ready for my big break, you know? Just waiting for opportunity to knock. All right, Mom, bye. <laughs> Letter from the president of Hollywood? I'm awesome, come here soon. Yeah, this is my big break. It's here, I'm out of here. I'm coming for you, Hollywood! Fuck you, Portland! Beyonce, yeah, I was on stage, so I couldn't call you back right away. Uh, I was gonna call you back, but uh, yeah, what's going on? Yeah, I have time. Oh, well, I mean, I don't think you should listen to the haters. I think you should. I know you don't have to take the stairs. I mean, you have crazy high shoes on all the time. I think, yeah, design some purses. I don't know, babe. Just like, don't go. I know they say it's like a free quiz, but it's not really free. No, I don't want to play cricket. Actually, I have a Bentley guy. Just send him to John on La Brea. Cause we're in LA. I know, I'll see you on Tuesday. Okay, bye. Gosh, thank you so much for inviting me to your party. I'm really excited to work with you on this project, Topher Grace. I mean, I've been a fan for a really long time. This is such a great party. Hey, what are those? Um, Frogs? Oh, Topher, you throw crazy parties. Um, Gosh, I don't know, I'm from a Portland comedy scene, we don't know much about drugs, but I guess maybe I'll... Yeah. Where am I right now? What year is it? Woo! Let's stay out all night! Let's drive up Mulholland Drive! There's snakes on the skin, there's bugs! Bugs are everywhere! Oh, I know when I'm gonna die. Uh, and the guy said, um, don't pass me the salt. Come on, guys, please. If you don't laugh a little bit, they're not gonna pay me after the show. I get, I get free clam strips. Please, uh, come on, buddy. You think this is easy? You think this is easy? Here, what I do, why don't you try it, huh? I think this is so goddamn easy.
So I don't know where Bree is, you guys. Um, but the show must go on. So if you will welcome my new co-host, Little Bree. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi, Little Bree. Hey, Alex. Uh, this is Lucia. She's also helping produce the show, and she's our new sidekick, and she's going to be awesome. You're going to like her. Uh, and uh, we have a great we have a great show for season five. I think you're really going to like the show. And uh, we have some really... I talked about the guests already, but let me... Uh, Alex! <laughs> voice from the past. <laughs> Bree! Normal Bree. What are you doing here? You, you know God well what I'm doing here. <laughs> you had your film crews follow me all over the <laughs> But I, I don't watch the dailies. That's a film term. You pick Lucia? Yeah, because she's uh, got glasses. Like, y Well, listen, I got something to say, Lucia. Somebody told me to follow my heart, and it led me here. Who told you that? <laughs> Lucia, where does your heart tell you to go? Right here, I'm staying. No, Lucia, what <laughs> is the second place that your heart tells you? I'm your Beyonce. Queen B? <laughs> What's the second place? I'm going to Hollywood. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Free. Welcome back. Goodbye, little Brie. Alex, it's time. Let's drop that first monologue of the season. Thank you guys so much. Let's talk about some news. It's the top of the show. I have some, there's some great local news this week that I want to talk about. The first story, it's my favorite thing that happened. You may have seen this. A terrier named Gidget. You guys know what I'm talking about yet? You do. All right, a terrier who lived in Pennsylvania and was lost four months ago, showed up here in Portland, wandering around over 3,000 miles from her home. No one knows how she got here but she definitely shouldn't have used Apple Maps. That was the first problem. <laughs> it's a great story, because it's sort of like Homeward Bound, except she would do anything possible to get away from her people. <laughs> she wanted to get away from Philadelphia as fast as she could. Uh, this is what Gidget said in an interview. She said, this place fits my values better. I like to run around with no shoes and play Frisbee and eat in parking lots. <laughs> There's actually, the downside of the story is there has been a huge influx of creative dogs moving to Portland <laughs> recently, and so all of the chocolate labs have had to move out to St. John's. It's, <laughs> it's very sad. Hashtag dogs of Portland. Okay. Uh, also, this is good news this week. The, the Hawthorne cart pod Cartopia was saved from the axe. Did you guys see this? Yeah. It was originally going to, be, uh, going to be removed to make way for some condos, but they got a two-year extension at least, which is great. It's sort of like that old song, right? Pave paradise and put up a parking lot, but then if you put Wiffy Pies in it, it's paradise again. <laughs> and we'll keep it. People were camping overnight last week in Tualatin for the opening of the new Cabela's there. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, they were all wearing camo, so we didn't have to look at them. Actually, this, this is too good. I want to read this quote because it's too good to even make up something like this. So a pregnant woman, five months pregnant, who waited overnight sleeping on the concrete in the rain said this, It was totally worth it. I can't wait to try the store's orange fudge and I might buy some camo baby clothes and a Remington shotgun. That's real. <laughs> she probably went on to say, We're going to name our baby Walmart Bill O'Reilly Jesus after my grandpappy. Pew, 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 pew. At the exact same time that this was happening for Cabela's, people were sleeping out overnight and waiting for the new iPhones. So if you ever wanted to see two groups of people who have nothing in common <laughs> do exactly the same thing, that was your chance. Uh, police in Oak Harbor, Washington, discovered a 70-year-old man last week who'd been impersonating a police officer for over 20 years. It's really sad, actually, because he was only two weeks away from his imaginary pension. <laughs> Almost made. <laughs> Mount St. Helens is showing signs of waking up and possibly being violent this week. Yeah, which is scary, but it's exactly how I would be if I woke up in Longview, Washington. <laughs> Get me out of this place. <laughs> I'm going to explode. <laughs> That's the monologue, you guys. That is the monologue. Aww. All right, are you guys ready for your first celebrity guest today? Woo! 
Woo! Also having an interesting day. May have gotten in a small car accident on the way here and still made it. Please welcome out from the thermals, Mr. Hutch Harris! I, I hope I didn't spoil anything that you were going to yeah, drop. Yeah, that's my about. big thing. Yeah, I had nothing to talk about until I got in a car crash on the way here. I, I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> this yeah. really happened. I'm not like, this is a comedy of errors. I uh, crashed my car coming to this show I'm 40 was minutes fine. ago. Yeah, Everyone and you is took a fine. cab and completed the trip. Just that, called a cab. I don't yep. like to use the word hero lightly. <laughs> Go ahead. But you're a hero, Hutch. I, I, I saved myself and the car. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm glad that. you're here. I'm really glad you oh, made yeah, that. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, this is such a thrill for me. I've been a fan of the thermals for a very long time. Thanks. Uh, and uh, I'm so excited to talk to you. Let, let's start here. Uh, you did this great interview on Song Exploder the other day. Yeah. It was really interesting. And so one of the things uh, that was amazing to me was listening to you dissect your earlier record and still being able to hear that sound and where that, like, even though that was recorded on a tape deck, yeah. hearing that in your very expensively produced new records. Well, the funny thing is the... The first record was recorded on a cassette machine, and I just had this old crappy mic uh, that I ran through, and I loved kind of, it had like a real like distorted kind of dirty sound. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. So we went to a fancy studio, and I just asked the producer, I really like this sound. Can I just bring the cassette machine and this old crappy mic and just sing through this rig? And he was fine with he was it. Fine. He wasn't like, yeah. I paid a million dollars for this. I would think a lot of producers would be like, I want to get like this clean, produced sound. He was, he, it's uh, John Aniello, who's from New Jersey, who's done, he's done like all the Dinosaur Junior records for the past 20 years. He did a lot of Hold Steady record, uh, a lot of the Hold Steady records. But yeah, he was fine with just me bringing this a uh, Teddy crappy yeah, in and cassette sing. machine. <laughs> yeah. So really, the sound has barely changed. You're just like paying more money for the same sound. <laughs> And what else, what is there, so you were doing that first record by yourself, though. You played all the, all yeah. the parts. Uh, and, and what is, well, as you've added people, what, besides the, te- the tape recorder, what has stayed the same for you through, as you've gotten famous? I mean, for me, a lot uh, has stayed the same. I always liked bands. I mean, I like bands that kind of, you know what you're going to get. ACDC, uh, The Ramones, Green Day. These are like a lot of the bands I like look to and like you establish a sound and then you kind of just like run it into the ground for 40 years <laughs> or forever. <laughs> you don't need to evolve or how change. Close? You just find what works and how do it. How close are you to the ground? Pretty close. A couple really? inches below. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, one of the things I want to talk about, let's do this. One of the things I want to talk about uh, that I think is really interesting that both you and Kelly are doing is that you're both... I would describe you as creatively, fiercely independent. Yes. Is that fair? Yes. So you you sell records and merch directly to, to your fans. Yes. And that is how you are making a living, partly. Yeah, that, that's a part of it, yeah. It's a part of your living. Yeah. Uh, why, why is that important to you? How did, how did that come about, and why, why do you keep doing it that way? I think people like that. If, you, uh, if people know that they're buying a record directly from the band... As opposed to, you know, a, a lot of the like free downloading and everyone just uh, getting into this mindset where you you don't pay for music, you just get music for free. I think right. a lot of people, uh, y- there was a conception that, uh, you know, record companies are really the ones making all this money yeah. off bands. So why should we pay for records? Because the money's not going to the band. So, you know, if you look at like people's Kickstarters and stuff like that, like people do want to give m- money to artists that they like. If you can just make like a you know old fashioned capitalist transaction, <laughs> yeah, so that selling way, people, you know, people will give you money without anything, you know, with no return these days. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's old that's fashioned. The Kickstarter model. You give me money, I'll, I'll give you a record. Like how about that? And, as as opposed to just give me money to what make a record. What if you maybe give me a T-shirt if this works out? Sure, I like that deal. Sure, yeah, that's okay. Uh, why? So uh, does that also make? Do you think that's cutting down on people stealing from like pirate no. record? Because then no. it's like I'm stealing directly from you instead of buying directly from you. One of the most common things people will meet people at shows and they'll be like, oh, I love you guys. I've downloaded all your records for free. I'm sorry. And they're like kind of apologetic about it. But they don't not like enough. give you $30 or something? No, no. No. Yeah. What do you say to somebody who does that? Thank you. That's very professional of you. What do you think when that happens instead? I mean, you're not going to get mad at someone. And it just, me personally, I, I, don't, I don't ever have to feel guilty about downloading someone else's record for free because I've provided oh. so much free content. <laughs> but that's, you know, but that's 
for me. You've banked credits from the, yeah. bank, the yeah. bank of Kazaa. Yeah. Uh, that's old school. Uh, they're coming Point back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. That's what my free copy of the Bible I downloaded said. I gotta be honest, Alec. They're just giving those away. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, they bought tickets to the show, so that's at least something. Yeah, They're not... financially supportive in other ways, I think. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not usually whining about people not no. buying records. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was asking you to whine about it, yeah. It's like sort of the model of comedians doing podcasts for free, and then it's like, come to our shows and yeah. buy stickers. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you still get... Huge turnouts at your live shows. How, yeah, you just yeah. did Project Paps. The big, did that ooh, yesterday. Big yeah. festival. Just How is the pr- project Still, right now. Yeah. I'm just a shill for life now. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's uh, that's just a normal. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> All that... I was there going, this is nice, but if I wasn't here getting paid, I would just hate this. <laughs> were, you, were you were you like this tasted better when it was an American? It tasted beer? better when it wasn't four dollars. Well. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Is that how much they? Cost? It's a lot for a Paps, right? <laughs> it's a Russian company now. They have to get their money's worth. They That's need. Like, I've like heard they need rubles. money. They do need money. They also they probably don't even have a. They don't call it a blue ribbon there anymore. It's all. I it's worth a ribbon, call but everyone it. gets yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did someone say red ribbon? It is a red ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a good, That's a good answer. Uh, so, in addition to doing your music and playing these festivals and uh, selling records directly to people, you also sometimes do. Art shows with cats in space. Well, I do collage, which all the Thermals record covers I've done. Right. uh, And they're all collage because it's the easiest art form. Because all you do is take (laughs) stuff that other people made and just paste it in a new setting. I'm sure there's a metaphor in there for all art, but I don't know if that's... Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I could say the same thing about the songs I write. Yeah, I wouldn't say that, but you could. Yeah. Uh, But like a photographer is like, there's art and I just got in the way of it with my equipment. Yeah, it was existing. (laughs) You didn't make that thing. You just happened to... Yeah, yeah. You just noticed art. Anyway, yeah. uh, so you're. A, how did this, so? Okay, so you, were, you did you start just for the for the albums, and then you decided to make into shows? Or were you doing collage art? We are. Uh, I was kind of our first record was Sub Pop. They, you know, Sub Pop has really good in house artists, but they were all kind of busy doing other stuff, and they asked someone else to do it. And what he did, we really didn't like. Oh. And the deadline was about like two or three days, and so I just kind of made something really quickly. But then I was so glad I did because for me it's way more personal. Like it represents like something that I made with you know, another thing that I made, so it makes more sense. And then how did you go from that to like actually putting together a gallery? They're not all cats in space, right? But they no, I did Some a show called are. Meat Men, which is men made out of meat. <laughs> all <laughs> men figure. are made out yeah. of meat. <laughs> Seriously, you said it. If you're in the mountains long enough. <laughs> What? That started out like a like a great sex joke, and it turned into a really dark joke. <laughs> uh, so you do meet men. Yeah, yeah. I mean, collage was just something. Uh, when we have, I like to stay busy when we when there's downtime with the band. And what's your what's your next thing with the band? What's the next thing that's there not is downtime? Nothing. nothing. There's nothing. I've, I'm here to plug nothing. Uh, we're just, gonna take a break. Yeah, we just that beer. We have right? no shows. There's that. There's this half a beer, and that's about it. Yeah, we played uh, the festival yesterday, and we really, we we came back, we unloaded, and we were all just sitting in the van. We were all just kind of silent for just a couple minutes, just kind of sitting there looking at each other, not and saying then you were like, anything. Well, I got a show what tomorrow, are we gonna you do? Guys... You know what? We will. We did get an offer. We went to China a couple years ago. Yeah, I heard and that. we just got an, another offer to go back and then to do a small tour. Of uh, Vietnam, Thailand, a bunch of other uh, Asian countries like around there. Very so I'm cool. really, really hoping that works out because uh, yeah. going to China was like the out of all the things we've done, that was the most. It was it was so different than anything else we ever did, and it was like really amazing. And so if the, like the Thermheads want to follow that tour, they would go to. Yeah. Is that Thermals. what your fans are called? Got to get a visa. The, th- <laughs> the Therm Animals. They therm are animals. now. <laughs> Yeah, give me five minutes. I'll think of a better the one. They're animals. They're like animals. Yeah. They're animals. They're made of meat as well. <laughs> yeah, they're made of meat. Uh, also, thethermals.com. And you are yes. at the thermals on yes. Twitter? Yes. Yeah. You are very active on Twitter and very funny on Twitter, and it's also a delight. And uh, Sometimes I, I'm on the lawnmower man. I exist only on the internet. You know, there's <laughs> no kind of human inter- real the interaction. Oldest internet at all. reference you could have possibly yeah. Yeah. It's pre internet, I think. I'm like the yeah. net with Sandra Bullock. I'm always <laughs> yeah, plugged yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. 
Where did net movies go? Are there any? It doesn't seem to be anymore. I'll, when check, we, I'll yeah. check on Kazaa when I get home. Yeah. <laughs> now that we know what the internet is, we can't make movies about the internet. So everyone's like, <laughs> Sandra Bullock. That's not how. It, that's not how it works. Well, uh, if you guys haven't, if you haven't gotten uh, all of the Thermals records, you can buy them from them directly at thethermals.com, and you should because they are all excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Hutch Harris. Thanks. Thanks. Mr. Stephen Wilbur. All right. Woo. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, very grateful to be here, in fact. Uh, sorry to get TMI on you, you know, right out the gate like this. But I did have a um, bit of a scare uh, earlier today. Um, I had this, uh, this burning um, in, in my penis. And... Um, and uh, uh, blood, <laughs> uh, uh, blood uh, in in my urine. Uh, anyway, went to the doctor, uh, got it checked out, see what the problem was. Uh, turns out, case of the Mondays. <laughs> Garfield was right. Ooh. Ooh, that doesn't seem stable. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, public transit people around here? Yeah. Woo. Woo. Uh, there's, these, there's these ads for uh, public transit uh on the, the the bus stops and such, uh, warning you about the max, uh, and warning you about uh, paying attention to your cell phone or your your iPhone, your iPod, your iCarumba, like everything. Um, and there's all these great. They show pictures of people just glued to their phones, you know, headphones in their ears, not paying attention to work. And it, there's there's one that says, um, "Don't let LOL become DOA." And there's one that says, uh, don't let death metal become death by metal. <laughs> and there's one that uh, says, don't let Candy Crush become your body crushed by the weight of a train. <laughs> and there's one that says, uh, <laughs> don't let Smash Mouth become a mouth smashed by the weight of a 50-ton train. <laughs> and then there's one that says, <laughs> don't let OMG become, hello, 911, I'd like to report an accident. <laughs> a man was paying attention to his cellular phone and then was run over by a train. OMG, there's blood everywhere. And there's one that says, <laughs> don't let angry birds become angry paramedics scraping your mangled corpse off the train tracks when they should be home observing Yom Kippur. <laughs> but my favorite of these ads <laughs> is the one that says, uh, don't let your love for the band train <laughs> become public knowledge. <laughs> Awareness is the name of the game. You know how people will say things like, uh, oh, I'm going to die right now if I don't eat a cheeseburger, you know? You never hear the opposite. <laughs> you just don't. I'll never forget the time I was conceived. Uh, it was Christmas Eve, 1982. My parents were uh, sleeping in a camper 
outside my grandma's house, and uh, they were getting frisky and uh, about to uh, seal the deal when they realized that my mom's birth control was in her purse on the other side of the camper. And uh, neither of them wanted to get out of the warm bed to get the birth control. So, uh, yeah. Aw. <laughs> Wait till the end of the story because nine months and four days later, out I came entertaining you tonight. Uh, no, I understand that that story is boring with a capital snoring. Are you kidding me? You're going to tell your child that story to make him feel proud of his heritage? It had no passion. It had no romance. It had no gaga magush. It had nothing. I'll have you know, when I tell my child the story of their conception, it's going to be so epic. You may just read in the papers about a grade school boner epidemic because he's, he's going to tell his friends this shit every day. Uh, playing the part of my son today will be Bree Pruitt. <laughs> just for eyeline purposes. <laughs> Eyeline's an industry term. <laughs> Sit down, champ. Scamp. Scampy champ. <laughs> Peepop's going to tell you the tale of the sensual machinations that brought you into this world. <laughs> Twas a husky autumn morn. We were driving down a windy coastal highway in a blood-stained PT cruiser recently picked up at a police auction. <laughs> Your mother? Well, you've seen her. Foxy brunette with curves in all the right places and nipples in none of the wrong ones. <laughs> Me, I was chiseled and strapping like a relevant Brandon Routh. We were on our way to play gravity tennis with President Maroon 5, because this takes place in the future. When the goddess Aphrodite must have pricked our loins with her katana blades as they ignited with white hot lust. We pulled over to this sun-kissed meadow. I carried your mother out to the center of it because I'm way strong and can do things like that. <laughs> and under the eyes of God, the wilderness, a couple dozen surveillance drones, we slowly peeled each other's clothes like we were two bananas that desperately wanted to fuck. <laughs> and right then and there, the sun illuminated every corner of our naked bodies and neighboring birds chirped, not a dead on, but a pretty close rendition of Led Zeppelin's All My Love. <laughs> how, do I, how do I put this eloquently? I signed your mom's uterus with my dude pen. <laughs> we rolled around in that meadow Writhing in carnal delight. Soon, the waves of ecstasy reached volcanic levels, and not to brag, but your old man busted more nuts than a malfunctioning trail mix dispenser. <laughs> we laid there, wriggling in delight, sweat beating on our taut skin like maggots on a wolf carcass. Just then, a wandering doe approached us with a basket of honey apples in her mouth as a gift to replenish our spent bodies for another round of passionate lovemaking. <laughs> and like a year or so later, we adopted you. And <laughs> just never had cool sex like that again. So thank you guys very much. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the next thing we're going to do, this is called Panel Action. Uh, I've brought, we've got uh, Stephen, who you just saw, you know Brie Pruitt, and this is one of our writers, Anthony Lopez. Welcome him out. And I, we have, we have some more, some, some news and some other things that I want to talk about, and I'm just going to toss some questions at the panel. I want to hear how you guys are thinking and how you're feeling. It is the fall, as you know. Mm. And, uh, I, which is one of those, the few times of year that has seasonal foods and beverages in a way that other seasons do not, right? It's time. They're out there. We'll start with Stephen. What is your favorite seasonal food or beverage? Well, I'm feeling it might be tied to nostalgia. Mm -hmm. You know, I had it a lot as a kid, but um, 
my mom makes the best cigarette ash crusted ham <laughs> that you have ever tasted. Brie, how about you? <laughs> I, I like a, I like a, I like an apple. Anthony, pumpkin spice latte. I'm a blueberry guy. Ooh. Oh! 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 I was okay, wrong. Okay, wait a minute. I was wrong. Count Chocula. Yeah, Chocula. Yeah, I know. I we all did our laughing. Mama, and yeah. funny thing. I did a really cool thing. But you talked about an apple. But <laughs> in seriousness, blueberry. <laughs> blueberry <laughs> chocolate. I'm I'm with everyone except for Frankenberry because it should be Doctor Frankenberry's berry cereal. Oh, so you go. Uh, yeah. You it go annoys with, me. <laughs> Frankenberry is not the monster. Have you ever had Chocula? Yeah, it's solid. It's really solid. But, but they yeah. do have chocolate cereals year round now, so we don't have to wait. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along. Ashland High School this week announced that they've gotten rid of the terms homecoming king and queen in order to not exclude students who identify as transgender or gender neutral, and instead they will be known as. Yeah, go ahead. That's yeah, cool. Isn't that That's amazing. Cool. That's incredible. Uh, we, so that's, that's my first question. So we feel good about that, right? Yeah, I, I think that no matter how you identify, you should be able to like make nodes feel inferior. <laughs> <laughs> so that's big. No matter who you are, you should be able to be voted the coolest kid in your school. <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, also, the na- instead of using uh, king and queen, they're called the Grizzly Royals, which uh, is pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, you can't even resent that person. As a nerd, be like, oh, no, the Grizzly Royals, they're pretty sweet. Yeah, <laughs> also sounds like a Netflix original series, so you can't be <laughs> mad at him for that. I think probably one of my favorite things that happened in local news this week is Portland con- Congressman Earl Blumenauer <laughs> posted this gem on his official Facebook page. Quote, does anyone else remember the scene in Dawson's Creek where Pacey and Joey are on the boat saying to each other, hey, do you want to do it? Let's do it. And then it cuts to them reading to each other. I think about that several times a day, and it makes me very, very angry. Why is con- uh, Congressman Blumenauer angry about that? Steven, you want to go first? Okay, like, <laughs> think about uh, the shipping of Joey and Pacey, or JC, uh, <laughs> as being Congress and the president, talking a lot of things, saying like they're going to, you right. know, seal yeah. the deal. Right. And then, oh, and then they're just. So do you think that you think that all was a metaphor for the political system? I think an intern accidentally logged in to <laughs> the account. <laughs> but if I were if I were going to do a press conference, I'd be like, well, I mean, let's look at the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, what do you think? Do you think uh, do you think that he's right to be angry about those two, or do you think it was just an intern? I think he's probably like pretty pissed about it, mentioned it to an intern, and was like, I'll take care of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get the word out. Top men. Like so, somebody's just sitting around and like, man, in this day and age. Lightning round, really quick. We'll start okay. with that side. Uh, a semi truck full of frozen chicken was abandoned at a truck stop in Montana for three months. What do we do with it? I say just like let it sit for a little bit longer, to see what happens. <laughs> We're already three months in to like letting this truck full of chicken rot somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And it's gross now, but who knows what it will be in a year? Probably science. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bree, what do you do with it? Um, I think set it out to sea like that rat boat that was oh, floating yeah. around the world yeah, uh, for ship. a while. Ghost ship that was filled with rats. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Send it to Cuba yeah. and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Both good so, options. Steven, what would you do with a truck full of chicken? You know, uh, coated in the right seasonings, <laughs> bam, you got Doritos, Pollos, Locos, Tacos. <laughs> That is the panel. She is the author of Captain Marvel and Pretty Deadly, among other things. She's done a lot of really cool stuff. Please welcome out Kelly Sue Jaconic. Hi. Thanks for being here. Thank you. That is a Red Bullish introduction. Yes. <laughs> it's way past my bedtime. <laughs> So I had three cups of coffee and one of these. So this should be fun. I am excited about it. Good, me too. I'm uh, excited about everything right now. Uh, 
Uh, you are also doing this on your anniversary, which I appreciate so much. It's very romantic that you're here uh, to share your anniversary with us. 13? 13 years, 13 yes. years. Yes, my uh, husband is up there, and he's wearing a suit and tie, and he looks fabulous. Yeah? So, yeah, we're like... Um, like Danny Zuko and um, uh, Sandy at the end of Greece. <laughs> yeah, just, except one of you is really tired and the other one's really awake. Tell me about it, stud. <laughs> That's so, a reference for really old people like me. <laughs> so you've done you do a lot of cool stuff, and you've been like you're, the Captain Marvel uh, reinvention that you've been a part of has been you okay. Good uh, is. Uh, is a bit of huge success, uh, but what I'm really interested, I want to talk to you about Pretty Deadly, because that's yours more than Captain Marvel, right? It, it is, yes. So it, it, entirely, and Captain Marvel is not mine at all. Yeah, that so belongs to Marvel. They I, won't let me have it. Even though, well, okay. So uh, without, without, we don't say anything bad about your employer. But tell me about Pretty Deadly. Tell me the like the story about that book. Tell me how that came about, and tell us. If, for those of you who don't know, tell us a little bit about about the book. <laughs> Um, it's really weird. It's, uh, uh, it's a Western mm-hmm. and, um, and there's a talking crow and a girl that was born in a river of blood mm-hmm. and, uh, there's a lady who turns into butterflies. When she gets stabbed, not just like all the time. No, that's how she dies, sort of. Right, like, right. yeah, she, so she, she when she loses her form, she turns into butterflies. Everybody has... Every character in it has a, has an animal kind of a, a, a alternate version of themselves, and hers is butterflies. I, you're already getting at one of the things that's really interesting about this book, which is that it is a Western, but it's also just steeped in this mythology yeah, and magic. A, it's a mythic Western. So here's what I want to know. How do you go about writing something that is that big, for lack of a better word? It's hard. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was... Um, th- that was actually the... the that's... The thing about it was that I was I kept trying to um, uh, uh, grow the world. Grow the world was kind of the 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 watchword as we were were working on it. Was yeah. like that that um, I it feels like you got dropped into the middle of something that was already ongoing. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and I know it's a little disorienting. It's not it's not a great book for uh, it, um, people don't like it when I or the people that I work for don't like it when I say like oh it's not a great book for they're like no that's not how you sell your work but. <laughs> So I'm bad. But I have to work book, on that. So you but can, it's you my, can sell it's my however book. you want. But it's not. It isn't. It like for your first comic. Yeah. Um. It's not a great book for your first comic. You should start with like Archie. You know. <laughs> I can understand that, and I am. I'm a relative novice with comics, but this is. It's so beautiful, and it's. It's so... gorgeous. It is really, really beautiful. Um. The artist is a woman named uh, Emma Rios, and yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. She's amazing. Um, and so it, it is extraordinarily beautiful and it's, um, she, like for a hobby, uh, Emma is like a medieval sword fighter. That's the thing that she does. Um, like, like LARPing? No, like with, no, with like, the duct tape sword? No, like competitively, like oh. men and women, um, compete against each other. They don't separate it. And so, you know, she, she'll talk about how like, well, you know, I'm small, so I'm fighting this big man, so I have to be really fast. And I'm like, wait, with swords? <laughs> <laughs> like, really? <laughs> Um, and she is, you guys are like going back and forth with the inspiration on this, right? You're, you're meeting with her and she's, you guys are yeah, both talking. Yeah, well, she lives in Spain, so we don't meet very often. But, um, right. but yeah, it, go, it goes back and forth. We write this book, or we write this book. It feels like we write this book. Yeah. Um, we do this book a scene at a time, which is kind of unusual in comics. Uh, usually it's, it's like a full script uh, at a time, so a full issue at a time. But the, we do this one, um, I write a scene and then she pencils the scene, and then while she, then she sends me the pencils, and while she's working on the inks, then I write the next scene, and that allows oh. the work to be. Um, a, it's a her art influences my writing a lot more than would work That's, when you do a script at a time. That, like if you when you read it, that makes so much sense. I yeah. can see that, and it does feel like it like the 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 script is in dialogue with the images as it's going. Yeah. Did you guys, so you said that's not really common in, in comics. Did you guys come up with that idea or did it sort of happen well, as you were working together? Yeah, we, we came up with that idea, but like we came up with that idea because I'm fucking slow. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, we came up with that idea because we had to. 
Um, I mean, presumably. But, but, then it, but then it became, yeah. no, no, this is part of our process now. So I, I mean, that, that really is true of a lot of great artistic works where the, th- one of your, the thing that you can't but do becomes one of your strengths, right? Like right. South Park's terrible animation became part of their ethos as yes, they got better. Yes, let's go with that. I, <laughs> <laughs> you started this as a huge mythic underworld story or you started as a Western story and that stuff came no, into it. No, we started it as like a straight up, it was going to be a spaghetti Western. Um, in fact, it was, it was going to be about... Um, it was going to be about a sharpshooter, um, mm-hmm. uh, Death Face Jenny, uh, who's a, sort of the main reaper in the story. Um, uh, that was going to be makeup, the Death Face. Um, instead so she, of an actual skull for a head. Inst- instead of an actual, yeah. Um, uh, it's a tattoo, actually. But. Oh. Um, oh, okay. Well, yeah, no, but, the, but Death has a skull for a head. Okay, great. Uh, but Sorry, Death yeah, Face Jenny, since Death is her daddy, right, wait, she has a, yeah, yeah, you know. But, it's um, like 80% comprehension. It's cool, it's cool, it's all right. Um, Normally, uh, not just in this comic. <laughs> no, no, no. That's good for this comic. That's really good. Like, uh, uh, read it like two, three more times. And then I you'll will. Go. Yeah. Um, but no. So it was gonna be. It was gonna be the Death Face Jenny. Like, would would be the one in the front of one of those wild, those touring Wild West shows. She would be the one that would like ride into town, you know, a couple days in advance, and and like do her pew pew, you know. And um, <laughs> I'm gonna write that in the script too. Pew pew. Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, impress and scare everybody with her death face, uh-huh. and uh, and and then we would watch. Uh, I dr- when when I was telling Emma about the story, I kept trying to for some reason I kept just drawing on a piece of paper. I was like, it's shaped like this, <laughs> and I kept drawing this upside down D. You know, like like you know, she's going west, and then we go back to the east, and you see, and and she was just like. <laughs> yeah, and you could you could see the moment where she was like, "Fuck it, I'm going." Yeah, and and, and well, it happened. I'm, I'm glad you said that because you actually mentioned that upside down D in the back of the books. I one of the one of the things that I think was really fascinating about this series is that you have an essay that you write in the. You back. read it in singles. I did read it in singles. Wow. I was loaned a, a copy of all of the singles, and it's Aww. great. But so okay, I didn't. Okay, so this is not in the in the volume. It's not in the collected in the version. Collect- well. What? Definitely, you should read it in singles then, because each one has an essay of the process and where you like how the story unfolds. You told the story of you figuring this out yeah. and like that D getting and getting rid of that and how that changed. Was that something you were always going to do? Is tell the story of telling the story, or did no. that come about also as because no, you were I had slow. five pages to fill at the back of the book. <laughs> <laughs> you are so lucky that every time you have a weakness, it's amazing. <laughs> Except that, for the one. Did you read the one in the back of five? The the one in yeah. the oh god, that was so bad. I so when it gets re- when it gets reprinted for like in this in the Spanish version, uh-huh. um, uh, they were like, "Do you have extra material?" And we're like, "Yes, we have extra material." And we're giving them pinups and everything, and like I, I wouldn't give them one of in, into five. I'm like, that never happened. <laughs> um, well, it, it's it's because uh, it's so ba- it's like super super pretentious. I was I was exhausted. I was writing it the night before we were going to press, um, and it's like you know, oh, the first arc is over, and thank you, thank you, and uh, thanking all these people, and then, like, like, seriously, it's, thank you, dear reader, most of all, thank you. I mean, it's it does sound corny when you read it in that voice. No, it's horrible. There's no good read, no. I... Okay. It was horrible. Well, this is what this is what I like about it is that this is your book, right? You own this story. Yes, yes. And it felt like that felt like your ownership in the story and like we're getting to know you and care about you and this book in a way that you don't always get with thing with creative works. And I thought that was a really yeah. is an amazing decision well, that came it, out of the weirdest reason. One but. of the the things about like the the weirdness of that book and the and the way that it's it's um it's it's dense. Um uh I like to think that you get your money's worth. <laughs> you do, yeah. Um uh the 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 thing about that is Emma and I were both coming out of doing um big two comics, which I love. I absolutely love. And I'm I'm very you know, Marvel comics have been very, very good to me. Yeah. Um but And you to them. Yeah, yeah. Um uh but there's this thing where they make you explain everything as you go, as, as though the reader were super dumb, mm-hmm. um, and uh, takes a lot of surprise away. Yeah, yeah, they, like you know, it's 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 like when people at the, at the end of serial fiction write to you and they're like, "Yes, I have a question. What's going to happen next? <laughs> like you're going to buy the next book? You know? Oh, sorry. Was that your next question? So, uh, yeah." 
Definitely uh, not. So, um, so instead of telling us what we can expect in ARC 2, let's move on uh, to another book that you're doing that also seems like it might be dense and interesting. Uh, tell us about Bitch Planet. Ooh. Ooh. It's about a planet full of bitches. <laughs> what draws your imagination to trashy genres? Um, oh, so I, I really like... Um, like exploitation movies, you know, or I thought I did. I remembered really liking exploitation movies and I uh. wanted to do this book where um, all of these movies that I loved growing up that I thought were so, uh, uh, I don't know, like viscerally rewarding, mm -hmm. um, but are like problematic from a feminist perspective. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe. A little. <laughs> um, I wanted to revisit them and s sort of see if I could do one that I could get the same like ha ha you know from like that 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 moment um but with morality that you agree with yeah but with like like not um because they do that thing where 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 <laughs> I'm sorry am I what? no you're okay. perfect um <laughs> Um, so they Let's get her another Red Bull, everybody. Okay. Can we get another? It's three of them. Um. So we'll all be medicated together. So they do this thing where, um, where they, they make this salacious, salacious situation on purpose, like, so we can um, like enjoy it in, in, a, in a like lewd way. Like the and cheerleaders are fighting or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. like punish the fucking cheerleaders for it, right? Right. That's not fair. <laughs> So, um, and feminism is about fairness. So I wanted, so I was like, I was trying to think about like the, um, like the, like the shower scene, right? How do we do a shower scene in a, in a, in a feminist sci-fi women in prison exploitation film? And, um, right? It's a good question. Sort of what Orange is the New Black is trying to do, sort of, like a bunch of broads yeah. in prison. Yeah, only that's real-ish. Yeah, it's real-ish. Um, um, what if you want a planet, I haven't actually right? watched it because I'm, I'm terrified that if I watch it, I'm going to freeze up because I'm going to be like, oh, no, that's too similar. It's not, but it's, maybe they have a similar mission to you, but it's not going to be that at all. Yeah. You're um, writing Bitch Planet, yeah. so that's different. <laughs> Mine is in space. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there is that, um, but they are bitches, um, yeah, yeah. so they have that in common. Still. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, so and we have a white lady too, but... Um, <laughs> well, you got to make it accessible for, yeah. you know... Otherwise, this is going to start with, this is not for, and you wouldn't want to do that again. Yeah. So when December. do we expect Bitch Planet to come out? December 10th. December 10th at fine comic retailers near you. Yeah, and if you're in Portland, and you probably are because you're here tonight, um, <laughs> there are a lot of really good comic book stores here. Support your local comic book shop. Go pick it up. We can also follow you at Kelly Sue. At Kelly Sue. Thank you so much. I can't wait to read Bitch Planet, and thank you for talking to us today. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Sue Ducati! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your musical guest for tonight, Siren and the Sea! So past the clouds evaporating at the pace of a winner Racing along goes by the reasons why they waited patiently above it all. And as they pass negotiating whether to temper nature or whether the storm collects the drops of some reaction to electricity touching their forms but darker nimbus structures forming first coming as shapes and then starting to call us back to brighter Sunday morning's waking away 
thunder rolls from their petty tongues. They get weaker with each storm that comes. Thunder rolls from their heavy lungs. So pass the clouds evaporating at the pace of a winter. Racing along goes by the reasons why they waited patiently above it all. No, it's not. Siren in the Sea, everybody! In 60 years, I'll breathe underwater and stretch these crooked legs under me. The sun will finally call me his daughter and shine that great old wisdom that I need. Oh, river, my home, I'll close my eyes when it's time to go. Oh, oh, river, I know, I know, I'll close my eyes and then you'll swallow me whole. stay wild she said never turn your back on the water or you'll meet your ocean grave my child Swallow me whole, 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 whole. Oh, snake river, I 
Ladies and gentlemen, Siren and the Sea. That's it for our show.